Well, if it isn't our old friend Alex Wagner, that paragon of the globalist narrative pouring on the anti-Trump propaganda, surrounded by three high-grade scoundrels, the talk devolved into a lecture on the dysfunction plaguing the current political system. Are you concerned about sort of the tenor uh, of things at this present moment? I mean, we are in a trade war with China. Populism is fierce. Does that concern you, having the institutional knowledge that you have? I would say gravely, yeah. But has 10 years really been long enough for Paulson, Geithner, and Bernanke to reemerge as the golden heroes of the mortgage crisis of 2008? Well, why not? We just celebrated the life of George H.W. Bush, pretending he was a model American president. And if Washington doesn't have enough to talk about these days, the Washington Times reported today that unidentified White House aides in the Carter, Reagan, and Bush administrations now are being investigated for using the services of a callboy ring. The paper reports that two of the male prostitutes were given a late-night tour of the White House last year. Not to mention that according to declassified documents from the National Archive that were suppressed by the Bush family for obvious reasons, H.W.'s father, Prescott Bush, served as a business partner with German industrialist Fritz Thyssen, a steel and coal baron who personally funded Adolf Hitler's rise to power. And as reported by the New Hampshire Gazette, the declassified records demonstrate that Bush and his associates continued their dealings with the German industrial baron for nearly eight months after the U.S. entered the war. The Bush family reeks of treason. A new world order can emerge. But back to their lackeys. No, fellas, we haven't forgotten who you are. The facts are, Hank Paulson's blind eye under the Goldman Sachs Treasury Secretary tenure failed to divert early on the mortgage lending that sent the economy into red alert. Instead, Paulson allowed top executives on Wall Street to keep cashing in on massive bonus checks while blue-collar Americans faced unemployment the depletion of their retirement savings, and eviction from their homes. Barack Obama's Manchurian candidate counterpart, Tim Geithner, a manufactured globalist, senior fellow at the CFR, a policy director for the IMF, member of the G30 and former president of the New York Federal Reserve, chimed in with his disdain for populism and the current administration. You know, no economy can be stronger than its political system. And the political system of the United States today is, um, has lost the capacity to govern and lost the core requirements, not just to make people confident in the fairness of the system, but to find room for compromise on the tough challenges we face in that context. And it's, it's not something we can survive indefinitely. You know, we're a strong country, a lot of underlying resilience, lots of good things happening in the American economy today, but we can't withstand the effects of a prolonged period of a broken, of a system this broken, this dysfunctional. Why are they even on television, you might ask? They are China's designated cheerleaders in the ongoing trade war between President Trump and President Xi. Michael Snyder of the Economic Collapse writes, Stocks originally began plunging when news broke that Huawei CFO Meng Wanzhou had been arrested in Canada and would be extradited to the United States. In China, there has been a massive explosion of outrage. The Chinese are demanding her immediate release, and the editor-in-chief of the Global Times is calling her arrest a declaration of war. Nothing is done or said at the Global Times without the approval of the Communist Party. Paulson, Geithner, and Bernanke are in league with the Chinese century model. And when and if the shit hits the fan, globalists in our midst like Geithner and Paulson and Bernanke will side with communism by default. There's nothing that unites Democrats and Republicans today like anti-China rhetoric and sentiment. And this is something that we should all be concerned about because... We need to be strong. We need to be tough. We need to protect ourselves. We need to protect America. But we need to find common ground with China. Haven't these globalists heard? Populism is rising, which will bring globalism to its inevitable end worldwide. Regardless, it's obvious that these babbling white shoe boys are the real dysfunctional danger to this country. John Bound reporting. 